Hi, I'm Joanne, and I'm here to show you how to make a substrate today in my very messy garage, so welcome. I'm gonna talk about the things that we need to have to make a substrate to begin, to begin with. The first thing that I made a purchase of was corner clamps, and so you need four of these for each uh, frame that you're going to make at some time period. I also need to have some sort kind of uh, piece of equipment so you can sand a few of your sides. A uh, little piece of equipment that I purchased at uh, Lowe's that was basically six dollars. It has a rasp on one side. Hand tool works quite well. Equipment, you also need to have a saw and uh, you can get a miter box and a black saw at Lowe's very inexpensively. And uh, one of the major purchases that I made for myself happens to be this power saw. Absolutely love this baby. I spent $99 on it and uh, that was one of the best buys that I ever purchased. Uh, they're considerably more expensive at various places, but yet if you're gonna make a lot of substrates, it's an extremely good investment. So thinking about the equipment that I have, I probably have $200 worth of equipment and that is two canvases in some of the sizes that I will paint with. <clears throat> the next things that you need to purchase are obviously the things to make your substrate. Um, if you're going to make a smaller one, I always use furring strips. The furring strips cost $1.37 a piece um, inexpensively. Obviously, you need to look down them to determine whether they are curved. You need to look at ones that have the fewest amount of knots because if there's a large number of knots, uh, they will have a tendency to warp or to be crooked. And if you're making a small piece of, uh, for a substrate, it isn't quite so comparative. But if you're making a large substrate, you will need to have uh, two of these for each size. I have one substrate that is finished. And I'll show you how to make one that looks just like this. Okay, this substrate is finished. I've mitered my corners. I put it together. I'll show you how to do that. Since I'm going to stretch a canvas over this, I put a support in the center simply to make it stronger. I glue the edges together and I use Elmer's glue. I purchased Elmer's glue in a gallon. I use about three gallons of Elmer's glue every year on all of the projects that I do. Um, it's about $12 a gallon to purchase Elmer's glue. Um, I do use nails and I'll show you those in a minute. Each one of the corners is going to have some kind of nail through it and they're called thin brads or very thin nails. They need to be approximately three fourths to an inch long to put it together. So that's what a substrate looks like and we'll see that in a little bit again. The first thing that you need to do is decide what you want to put your painting on. Okay, now that we know most of the tools that we should use, there's another piece that we're going to have to have. This is the piece that I'm going to make a substrate for. So I need to determine that it is 19 and 3 fourths inches long and it is 17 and 3 fourths inches wide. So with that bit of knowledge, I will go ahead and I will make my um, my substrate that's going to support this. This piece I have cut to 19 and 3 quarters. This piece I have cut to, <coughs> excuse me, 17 and 3 quarters. Okay, so the thing that I usually do is a little bit probably different than most people. I will take my first one and I will use it as a guide. And I will measure the second piece from that. Okay, the thing that you need to remember is that I need to have my degrees, they're 90 degree angles, and they need to make sure that the shorter side is the same on both pieces. So this piece is going to be here. Let's make sure we're even again. I can mark it with a pencil. And I almost always cut it too long when I mark it with a pencil. exactly the same thing. We'll figure out where it needs to be. Make sure that the long side, okay, this is the wrong way. So it's all I need to do is flip my board. Okay, all four pieces are cut. Do. These corner clamps ran about $4 a piece. So I basically have $16 invested in the larger size. I do have some smaller ones that I had purchased earlier. The smaller ones, and I've had these for a long time, and I did not check a new price on these, but the smaller ones when I bought these was $1.49. So when I'm purchasing my corner clamps, 
one set of corner clamps is exactly what one of these would cost if I purchased it. So that's the major difference there. Okay, there's some other tools that are sort of standard. Everybody needs to have a hammer. Everybody needs to have a um, tape measure. You can also put them on with small nails. Okay, first thing that I do is I set up my corner clamps in approximately the right place. Okay, that one happens to be the long side. This is the short side. Okay, make sure that my corner clamps are even. Put the pieces in. Okay, long side goes over here. And short side goes here. After I've determined that all my pieces are relatively even and where they should be, so it sets up square, I take my trusty Elvis glue, which I buy by the gallon, and I will take paintbrush. Okay, open this up just a little bit. Take the Elmer's glue and put it on each side. Okay, and I will do all four corners. I'll do two at a time, but today I'm just going to show you this. I have a tendency to push mine off to the side, and the reason I lay, line it up with the table is so that these corners are easy to turn, because with your corner clamps, you make it as tight as you possibly can, and with my crooked fingers, it's a little bit harder to do that. So if I put it to the side, turn them as tight as I can, I'll work this one the same way, put glue on that, and turn the pieces together. When all four sides are together, I will let it set. Usually I let it set for about an hour, and then I will take a small brad, and my brads are going to look, they're called wire brads. They're going to be about this long, and I will take a wire brad and I will nail it right through the center in here, and it will hold the pieces together. I will put one on each one of the corners after an hour's worth of drying, and uh, then I will let it dry. With this size of uh, substrate, it'll probably need to dry a couple of hours for a uh, good measure. This substrate is a little bit larger, and it was done in exactly the same manner. I started it yesterday afternoon, and I did let it dry overnight. Uh, okay, we're ready to put a canvas on this one. Okay, when you get ready to cut your canvas, you make sure that your canvas is going to come around to the back. Okay, so this is going to come around this far. Okay, and then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut my canvas. Really, if you cut it a little bit extra long, it doesn't matter. Because all you need to do is make sure that there is enough. If you cut it too short, you're in trouble. Okay, canvas has a salvage edge, and the salvage edge is going to be the fuzzy edge. The fuzzy edge is straight, and if I want to cut something that is straight, I will put the fuzzy edge together. Okay. And you notice if I'm cutting and your scissors are sharp, it simply slides through. That means that it's cutting on the grain and it usually gives you a nice, straight, even cut, uh, which is a nice thing to have and it saves canvas. Okay, we have our canvas ready to put on. Okay, we're ready to put the canvas on, but since I'm in my garage, it's a little chilly. Give me a minute to put on my, my sweatshirt and we'll get back to making a canvas. I have two staplers. I have a hand stapler and I also have an electric stapler. They both use exactly the same staples. This one takes a lot more effort to work simply because you have to use an extra pressure. So we're ready to staple the canvas onto my substrate. I start with a corner and I don't put it all the way down. I usually leave a little bit of space simply because if that one needs to be pulled out, I can do that. So at a diagonal from the other side, I will go ahead and staple this, this corner. Okay, I'm going to staple this one and I'm going to try and pull out part of the wrinkle that I made when I stapled the cross. I'm going to do the same thing across this side. Pull it as tight as I possibly can. Staple the corner. 
Now I'm ready to do all the sides. I usually do one of the long sides first. So let's start with this side. Okay, I'm gonna fold the corner. And I have a pliers that has a wide nose. I believe it's actually something that I, I picked it up at Harbor Freight, but I think it's designed for a welder. And I think you can buy them at stores to stretch canvases. I'll grab a hold of the canvas, roll it over the top, and staple this side down. Pull this as tight as I possibly can. Continue across the whole thing. I will make a diagonal fold. Okay, that will be repeated on all four sides. When I get to this last corner, sometimes this staple needs to be removed to make sure that there are no pleats or no wrinkles. All fabric, whether it is, this is actually a cotton canvas. You can buy cotton duck. All fabric has grain, which means that you have fabric or lines of thread that run straight through, lines of thread that run this direction. If you keep the grain relatively straight, your canvas will always lay considerably straight. The previous canvases that we made were relatively small. Today we're going to talk a little bit about making a canvas that is a little bit larger. The canvas we're going to construct is going to be 40 inches by 40. We're going to use fur ring strips for the supports. There's another possibility of something you can use. This is called a two by two. The two by two works fairly well. And when this one is finished, it's also going to be the same shape as the two by two. The difference being, if we put these two pieces together, it helps to eliminate some of the warpage because we're going to put them so the grains are not exactly the same and we're going to glue them together and screw them together and they will not warp. This one, has a tendency not to warp, but just in case it does, that's why I choose to use the two guys instead. If this one we're making, like I said, is a 40 by 40. If you're doing this, you can do a 40 by 40. If you want to use something that's even larger, say if you're making something that is 60 inches or 72 inches, on your support, you're going to have to use a two by four. And the two by four is going to be, of course, you know, three and three quarter inches and two this way. You're going to use it as a support laying this direction. If you put it this way, so it's flat, it has a tendency to do a little bit of warpage. If you do it this way, it does not. If you're making extremely large canvases, you're going to put two two by fours together. Obviously the weight gets pretty prohibitive, but it stops any warpage and it also makes really large canvases. Okay, to put this one together, the first thing that I'm going to do is put some glue in it. You can use Elmer's, you know, glue all. You can also use wood glue. Since this is not going to go outside, the Elmer's glue is going to work just fine. So I'm going to put Elmer's glue on first. And I, uh, most of the furring strips that you're going to find, you're going to have a rough side and a smooth side. I have a tendency to put the rough sides together Make sure that there's enough glue to put it inside of the little cracks and grooves that happen on the rough sides. And that way when you put them together, it has a little bit more tooth and it'll have a tendency to stick together better. Okay, so we're a little more Elmer's. The furring strips, uh, as you purchase them at Lowe's, they're eight feet long and they're going to be that, of course, one by two in uh, width and in height, they run approximately oh, a dollar, dollar thirty-five to a dollar ninety-nine. And you're going to use four of these for making a pretty good-sized canvas. Okay. Now that we have the glue on, I'm going to put these two together. And I have a tendency to put them together and use a seat clamp to begin with. The seat clamp looks like this. I'll put one in this corner. Screw it tight. Okay, we line them up as evenly as you can possibly get them. Clamp them together. Okay, I'm gonna go on and put this down at the other end. Okay, as even as I can get this. There will be about six inches of wood that we're going to eliminate. If you're making a canvas that is say 36 by 40 and you're using the same sort of boards, 
you actually will have enough to make a wooden support in the corner. What we're going to do today, we're going to use metal supports in the corners, which will make it considerably stronger. First thing after they're together, I'm going to drill some holes or some pilot holes. And the reason you do this is because um, the wood, most of the wood that you purchase this day and age is not is somewhat wet, and consequently it has a tendency to has a tendency to split and to warp. And so if you put the screws in and if you drill a pilot hole first, when you put the screws in, your wood is not going to crack. Okay, there's several kinds of screws that you can use. Um, the screws, if they have what's called a star nose, generally they will come with its own little attachment that you can put into your power tool. Or you can use a hand tool. If uh, you have what's called a brace and a bit, you can use this little star tool and put it in. Obviously, the one that is the most common, it looks like this, and it's called a hex. And of course, they come in all different lengths and sizes. Okay, the screw is simply attached to the end. With pilot hole, it has a tendency to go in pretty fast and pretty easy. Make sure that the drill bit that you are using is not larger than your screw. Oh, I went in a little far that time. Okay, let's back it off just a little bit. This wood is relatively soft. So I have to be a little bit more careful. And for those of you who have never used a drill, if you put this little lever one direction, it goes forward. If you push it the other direction, it goes backwards. So you can take out any screws that you have put in incorrectly or too long. After you have put in the screws and the two pieces are put together, we're going to measure. And today, because we only have a certain amount of canvas, the canvas comes in a 60 inch wide, but we're gonna do a 40 by 40 piece of canvas. When we get ready to stretch it and cut it, we have to make sure that the glued side is up to the top instead of laying this direction, because if it's up to the top, it has a tendency to eliminate considerable amount of warpage, and that's why we put the two pieces together anyway. So I'm going to mark this edge where I'm going to start the cut. Okay, and then this is going to be 40 at the finish. I'm going to need somebody to hold this for me. Can you come hold the other end over here? Okay, right on the edge. Okay, thank you. Start off that. We have to have somebody to help pose it. Hold. All right, so we're going to have a 40. This is going to be the end of this side and the end of that side. And then we're going to do another 40 cut. So let's go to the saw and cut this one out. Okay, we've marked where our cut needs to be. Our cut is a 45 here. My saw is set to do a 45. So we're going to line this up and make a 45 degree angle cut. <laughs> To the we can do this one and measure it from at 40. Okay, so from this point okay to this point is a 40 okay. the measurement. Okay, we have to make sure that the long sides are the same. Okay, this makes the long side on the other side. So I'm going to have to adjust this and rotate my board over so my cuts both go the same direction. Okay, so I want my long side here so it equals the other side and it needs to be 40. Okay, so line up the saw. to take the other side and make sure that we turn that one into a 40. Okay, so we're exactly on. This is the long side. of our 
board. So we have a second board that we're going to need to cut to exactly the same size. All right, second side's ready to cut. side we're going to make the other side so it is the same cut long side needs to be over here short side needs to be here so if I put it in my saw blade it has to go around to this side okay let's make sure that they're the same length that puts my cut right there set. 40 inches is measured with its partner. Cut. So, this time period we have four pieces that are ready to put into a uh, the corner supports. Uh, since this is a larger canvas, we can take the extra boards and we can make some corner clips. So on this particular one, if I, okay, I have a foot, a, fat, a foot left, I believe, we'll have enough to make two corner clamps. I have 18 inches, it's not quite enough. So let's go for a foot. Gotta get my pencil. Things fall down in my world. Okay, both corners need to go the same direction. So we're ready to put them inside of the corner clamps and get ready to uh, put it together. Okay, as we had mentioned, when we're going to put the canvas on, we want the sides that are glued up to the top to help eliminate some of the warpage. When I talked about making a corner clamp, when we cut these off, the corner clamp has to, at a 45 degree, or has a 90 degree angle, or 45 degree angle also. So we've put glue on the edges of it and we're going to put it inside of this corner to support. Because with a large canvas, there's going to be a little bit more give. Process is the same. I'm going to drill a pilot hole and I'm going to have to drill it. And I put a support underneath it so, um, you need me yeah, so I don't have to hold it quite so much. Okay. After we have put in the, the corner clamps and or put in the corners, then uh, we've wrapped the, the canvas around on all four sides. There's a couple of things that you can do to finish your canvas. The first one is, is we can take this canvas and we can turn it under and it can be, all of the raw edges will be turned under. It can be glued so it looks like this when it's finished or you could go back through with staples and run your staples the, uh, the opposite direction. And that is a very efficient way to finish off your canvas. The way that I usually finish my canvas is what I've already done on this side. I have taken the scissors and I have cut this off. By cutting it, I simply put it against this way and cut it off. Then I will take a paintbrush and I will take some uh, of the Elmer's glue. I will simply slide it under here, press this down <clears throat> after it's dry. I will take either the scissors or a mat knife and I will cut it directly where the wood is. It's pretty efficient <clears throat> and uh, if you go across the edges, it will leave once in a while, you'll have a little bit of string that shows up. You can simply go back and cut off those little strings or don't worry about them. Because most canvases, when you're finished uh, doing this process and you have finished painting it, the backside is covered and it's usually covered with a piece of uh, brown paper or you can leave them plain. A lot of the larger ones are left open this way. One of the reasons that I have put in the corner clamps, obviously, is to keep this stable. A second reason that I like this kind of corner clamp is, you're of course going to put a hanger of some kind. You usually measure down 
um, six to eight inches to where you're going to put your wire. And if it's a really large piece, sometimes I like to put a screw eye inside of here, inside of that side, and then I will put my wire across the inside of it rather than putting it clear out to the side. It hangs better and it doesn't completely hang out from the wall. Okay, this canvas is now ready to gesso. And uh, after it's gessoed, all of the little bubbles are going to totally disappear. If you tap it and there's barely a little bit of spring, you know that your canvas is perfect. If your canvas has a little bit too much spring, you can honestly take a small piece of wood. Oops, put this back over. You can take a small piece of wood and you can slide it under here. And sometimes that will help to stretch the canvas. You, I'm sorry, you slide it on the bottom side and it will help to stretch the canvas. You simply put it inside of here. Personally, I don't use them very often. I don't believe this one's going to need that. I think we've done a good job and this one's ready to, to gesso.